Your intake manifold is basically a compressed air reservoir. The turbo's job is simple. Pack that reservoir with air to your target pressure. When the intake valve opens, that compressed air rushes into the chamber. The higher the pressure above atmospheric, 14.7 PSI at sea level, the more air you can shove in and the more fuel you can burn. It's that simple, so why does a larger turbo make more power than a smaller one, assuming you're packing the intake manifold to the same pressure? The short answer is mass flow capacity on the inlet and outlet side and being able to operate deeper into the compressor map's efficiency island. But for the detailed answer, there are mainly two reasons, back pressure and air density. On the exhaust side, back pressure is the bane of every four-stroke motor. Normally Normally your exhaust runners merge into a 2.5 plus inch collector for plenty of flow area, but add a turbo and all that exhaust is now forced through a turbine and turbine housing that's usually much smaller. That restriction creates serious back pressure, which kills power through pumping losses. A bigger turbo relieves that restriction, so the engine breathes out freer and frees up horsepower. On the intake side, the compressor wheel is the key. A larger wheel does move more air per rotation due to blade size, more importantly, it can sustain higher mass flow at the same pressure ratio while staying in its efficiency island, so it doesn't need to overspeed to keep up. That keeps boost stable at high RPM when the manifold is constantly being emptied. Smaller turbos have to spin insanely fast, squeezing the air harder, which adds heat. Bigger wheels achieve the same boost with fewer rotations and less temperature rise. I'll get to why colder air means more power in a moment, but to clarify in layman's terms, because this can be confusing, the manifold being pressurized itself doesn't meaningfully add heat. The temperature rise comes from the air being squeezed by the compressor blades during compression. Larger blades usually result in lower temperatures because they move the same amount of air into the manifold with fewer spins, which means less total air squeezing and less compression heat produced. The heat load is tied to compressor efficiency, not just the fact that the manifold is pressurized. Now, colder air is denser air, which is why air density is so important. Colder air resists knock since there's less post-compression heat, allows more ignition timing and burns more completely. The result? Stronger combustion and more power, even at the same boost pressure. That's why a bigger turbo not only makes more power, but also expands your power band as long as it's spooled properly. There's also the saying that a larger turbo makes the same power at a lower boost pressure. That's true, but it's mostly because of reduced pre-turbine back pressure. Assuming charge air temps aren't significantly higher with the smaller turbo and intercooling gets it down to similar temperatures. Because remember, the fundamental of forced induction is the more manifold pressure you can safely add while keeping air temperatures under control, the more oxygen you can force into the chamber and the more power you can make. So if you enjoyed and you want more clear and concise videos like this one, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.